So I'm just uh, working on an uh, a, a idea for a video, like 10 things that would ruin your cruise. Uh, number one, I have your partner cheats on you with the main hamburger maker at Guy's Burger. And uh, number two, explosive diarrhea. And those two things could be related. Um, but it, that's a that's a WIP. That's a work in progress. Uh, what we're here for today is some cruise news. And to answer the question, would Carnival really do this? Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I am your host, Tony, here to talk you through everything going on in cruising. I got a little cruise news for your face. And cruise news story number one. Uh, it was a rough weekend for cruise passengers on the Disney Wish. They were doing just a short cruise down to Nassau, Bahamas, and Disney's private island, Castaway Key, when everything went uh, amiss. There was some sort of technical difficulty with the brand new cruise ship, the Disney Wish, which caused her to be late when sailing into Nassau, Bahamas. And when guests debarked to have their fun day in Nassau, little did they know that when they returned to the cruise ship that night, instead of sailing away and making their way to Castaway Key, they would be stuck in the Pirate Republic, stuck in Nassau, Bahamas. And of course, getting stuck in Nassau, Bahamas overnight is not the worst thing, especially when your next port of call is Castaway Key. It's close enough to get to the very next day, and that was the plan. However, when they got unstuck from Nassau, the weather was so inclement that they were unable to go to Castaway Key, and that got canceled. In addition, the fireworks that were supposed to happen on the first night of the cruise uh, got rescheduled. I guess all's well that ends well. The fireworks did happen along the way on that cruise, and passengers were compensated with a $100 onboard credit and a future cruise credit for their troubles. But yeah, that points out a challenge when you're taking a short cruise. Uh, if anything goes wrong at all, your whole itinerary might be jacked up. But like I said, Disney Wish, the newest cruise ship in Disney Cruise Line's fleet. Plenty of stuff to do on board. I know many people don't get off in Nassau anyways. And a missing Castaway Key is just missing a day at the beach. Uh, I, I'm sure everybody had a good time. Were you stuck stranded on the Disney Wish over the weekend? How was it for you? Would you be angry if that was you? Leave a comment below. Cruise news story number two, and I'm kind of rethinking that opening. Um, of course, you know, if your spouse is cheating with a crew member, that's bad for your spouse and you and the crew member, but which would be worse? So forget the guy's burger, head burger maker. What if, what if they're just cheating with, uh, you know, um, you know, Jim from Wisconsin? Like what if a cheese head all of a sudden moved in on your significant other and you know, they're, they're spending time together and he's talking about Packers football. That'd be, would you want that? E either way, either way, the, the, uh, well, I guess burger maker, cheese head, either way, it's bad. I might pick number two, like behind door, you know, the number two that we were talking about. Um, but, but no, cruising story number two, very serious. Uh, let's get serious. Let's get physical. CLIA, Cruise Line International Association, they have been working with the city of Juneau, Juneau, the city of Alaska. You know that one? Juneau, Alaska. And they have determined that beginning next year, they will limit the amount of cruise ships that can visit Juneau in one day. When I read the headline, I was like, oh no, this sounds bad. They're limiting it to five big cruise ships a day. I don't know how many cruise ships go into Juneau currently, but I would be shocked if it was more than five big cruise ships. So at first blush, at first glance, this may seem bad, but it still seems like a lot of people will be able to visit Juno in a single day. Now, this new limitation will not have a big impact on the 2023 season because cruise lines set their schedule about a year in advance. So if we do see any major impacts from this five ship per day limit there in Juno, it will more likely be reflected in the schedules for the 2024 Alaska season. I guess the alarmist in me could be like, oh no, you better get out to Alaska before they put some severe limitations on it. It doesn't seem like that's coming. It just seems like they're trying to manage it in a responsible way. And I did learn a new phrase today that I would like to share with you destination stewardship. It really speaks to the symbiotic relationship between cruise lines and destinations where they have to work together. 
uh, to do what's best for local economies, to do what's best for the cruise business, to do what's best for the consumer. It's a complicated thing. How, how are you feeling about your destination stewardship today? Do you ever feel like um, like you've got to make sure that you spend some money in the ports that you visit uh, just so that you're not just abusing the fact that you can go to a port of call and just walk around and not spend any money? I always try to spend some money because uh, I think maybe I'm concerned with destination stewardship also. Uh, but interesting. Interesting thing. Uh, are you worried about these limits of cruise ships in Alaska? Have you been to Alaska? Is it on your bucket list? Have you ever uh, competed in the Iditarod? I don't know. <laughs> Leave a comment below. Now, very shortly, we will talk about whether or not Carnival will do the thing that they may do. Uh, but before I do that, I still have two more cruise news stories for you. I'll pop them out real quick. Uh, like, you know, baby number three and four. I've never popped out a baby, so that's probably a wrong. But what I understand is that when you have multiple babies, the subsequent baby beyond the first baby, they, they've they come out quicker. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Uh, all right. The Silver Seas, they've got a big milestone, shipbuilding milestone. The Silver Nova has floated out, floated out at the Meyer Werft shipyard in Papenburg, Germany. Float out is an important milestone. That means the ship is on water and it is floating around. Uh, this is all part of it. It's prior to the sea trials and all those other things, but it is something noteworthy. Uh, congratulations, Silver Sea, for the float out of your latest cruise ship. And then cruise news story number four, also a story about the Alaskan cruise season as Holland America has kicked off her Alaskan cruise season part of the 150 year celebration. They've been doing some interesting things at cruise ports. They have like a plaque exchange. So they did a very special plaque exchange between Holland America Line and the port of Seattle uh, to kick off this latest 2023 Alaska season. And which damn ship is kicking off the season in Seattle? Why it's the Euro Dam. I had a wild realization the other day. I've spent more than a month on Holland America Line this year, 2023. But I've got I've got a month's worth of data, of insight to bring to you on that. I hope to have that video out this week, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel. And because of my uh, uncertainty as to when that video will come out, uh, this would be a good opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you like staying up to date with everything going on in cruising. And if you'd like to know if Holland America is just for old people, well, the, the easiest way to find that out is to be notified when the video comes out. You can get all that set up for yourself and maybe a loved one if you want by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, it's good for you and dag nabbit, it's good for me. It's like a virtual hug when you hit that subscribe button. You're hugging me, I'm hugging you, touching me, touching you, sweet Carol. Hold on, I gotta write sweet Caroline down on my list of things that could ruin your cruise. Ba, 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 Luda, Chris never sang. It's so good. So good. So good. So good. There was no karaoke on Holland America. That's a negative one for that experience. All right. Uh, here's the deal. Something I've been advocating for a long period of time is I would like to see some dedicated workspaces, aka cubicles, on cruise ships so that the remote worker, the mobile worker, the people of the future uh, can have a place to work on cruise ships. And now there's starting to be conversations about it. Uh, brand ambassador put it to the people. He's got 400,000 subscribers over there, followers. He put it to the people saying, would you like a dedicated workspace on a cruise ship so that as a remote worker, you could get some work done? And I, for one, say yes. And of course, I know there's a lot of people out there that say no. So I thought I would throw it out there so that you could comment away and you could put comments down like, yes, I would love to work on a cruise ship. Uh, that way I could cruise more. Or you could say stuff like, you go on a cruise to go on vacation. You shouldn't be doing working at all. You should just be drinking and, and having an affair with the guy that runs Guy's Burgers. You can have all those comments that you like down there below. Let me do this. Here's a picture of the library on the Holland America Rotterdam 7, the seventh version of the MS Rotterdam. Here's a little footage of the game room, the place where people do the jigsaw puzzles on the Holland America Rotterdam 7. What do you think? Would you like to see these spaces ripped out and replaced with some cubicles that have USB connections and power? And the, I don't know that I would. I think they can find other places. So please uh, provide some feedback in the comments. I know that the cruise lines sometimes read the comments of our show and uh, if you're passionate one way or the other about whether or not workspaces should be included on cruise ships for remote workers, please leave a comment and hopefully we can move the needle. Would Carnival do this? 
I hope the answer is yes. Thank you guys so much for checking out the show today. I have to go now and write a letter to the president of the Cruise Line International Association to see if we can get Sweet Caroline removed from every karaoke list. Let's get that thing banned. Bah, bah, bah. We'll never hear it sung again. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this is Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see ye, see ye on the Lido. Bye.